just wanted to show a small little walkthrough on how to pretty much set up a, um, a develop developmental workspace for any future snapshot of Minecraft, both server and client. It's pretty easy to set up, but you just got to set up the environment the first time and you're pretty much good to go for any version you want. So to start, I'm going to show how to do it on a server. You're just going to want to get the server jar and maybe make a folder somewhere to store the stuff because you don't want to make your area too messy. I'm just going to call it um, MC development, Developer. Um, so after you do that, you, you're also going to want to get the obfuscation mappings for it. We're going to be using Mojang's built-in ones because the um, the later versions of these are actually a lot are always going to be provided, so it makes sense to use it. So um, just uh, just download it or something, wherever you want. You can actually download it just by saying save link as and call it like I don't know uh, mapping dash um, then the server version which is I think this one's like 20w22a or something um, so once you have that just throw these both in um, your, wherever you want to put them pretty straightforward um, so after you do that you're going to want to get a couple programs um, I highly recommend using this is the one I'm going to be showing you guys about it's a pretty awesome one I'm, I'll just clone it for the sake of showing everybody um, so just download it it's really useful it'll actually deobfuscate the it'll apply the mappings to the server so just extract it um and after that you can just throw this away or if you want to keep it later i guess you could um so this guy really just will make a safe deobfuscation of okay so after you get this installed what you're going to want to do is get open up git bash if you don't have this on your computer it's pretty straightforward to install you can just get it from um right here this is just a much more powerful um, terminal than Windows standard one. They might have better ones actually on the market, but um, just for what the purpose of this, um, it works pretty well. So uh, what, just use your terminal of choice, and after you do that, type um, dot slash gradle w install dist um, this will make sure that you have, it'll pretty much just get all the tools you need. Okay, so once this guy's all finished, what you're gonna wanna do is simply go into the build directory inside of the build directory you just want to go into the install directory go into remapper then you're going to want to go into bin now you're going to notice i have an extra folder in here that you're not going to have i actually want to automate this a tiny bit more so i did this off camera um so essentially what you get what you're going to want to do is when you go over here you can get any version you want of the game um that has the obfuscation mappings um and make a folder called version and um, after you make that folder what you're going to want to do is make another folder just i just named it the name of, of the version that i'm making and um, after you do that it's pretty straightforward just open it and what you can do is i th just put, uh, put these two files inside of the folder um just the ones that i got from here and here and uh, make a make a text edit document um, and just name it. Um, oops, just name it. Um, like deof deof or something. And once you do that, what you're gonna want to do is pretty much just uh, let me throw this on the side and I'll open this. What? Just copy pretty much copy paste this. I'll throw it in the description. I build it built it like a two second script and all it does is um, it pretty much just automates the building process so you don't have to type in all these parameters if you want to make a, a new jar. Um, so once you do that, just do file, save as, whatever, blah, 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 um, diodfop.bat, and save that. So all files, encoding doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, actually, it does matter. Um, so keep it like that. And once you do that, all you have to do is run it, and you'll notice that it will simply run uh, start doing all the mapping and once it finishes doesn't take too long um, you will notice that you have something called diob server which is exactly what you want 
Okay, so what you pretty much do is once you build all this stuff, what you're gonna, I'm, I built a new script called repository, and this is pretty straightforward. What you're pretty much gonna want to almost copy paste all of this. Um, so it, it essentially is just running something that you would normally just do through the command line. Um, so it's going to create a local repository inside of your um, repository, local repositories, um, Maven, whatever, you know. Um, so D files is going to be the name of the um, of your deobfuscated jar file. Um, uh, the group ID is going to be the group ID that, that you would normally use for whatever projects you make. Um, artifact ID, I'm going to be calling this Minecraft server. Um, makes and that'll um, be used for recognizing it. And then, um, then we have the version, which is just I named it the snapshot version of the game right here. So after you do all that, you're just gonna want to save it as. Um, and then make sure you do the dot bat right here. Do this to all types of files and ANSI. So once you do that, all you have to do is run this script, and it'll that's all it'll do. It'll just create the re repository for you. And then you want to go into IntelliJ and create a pretty much you just want to create a new project and make it a Maven project. Um, and after you do that, you're going to go into your palm file and. Um, after you, and then all you have to do is just, um, I'm going to provide this in the description. Really, you're just going to want to copy paste this right here. And except um, what you're going to want to do is anywhere that you see my group ID that is pointing to Minecraft server, just change it with your group ID and your artifact ID, all the stuff that you just, that was specified inside of the repository bat file. Um, it'll know how to do the rest. Make sure you have the version right is correct as well. And then inside of here, this is going to be, we're, the way I'm doing this is we're pretty much applying patches to the actual jar. This way we don't have to screw around with any, to, as we can screw around with as little source code as we have to and it'll still be uh, compiled just fine. Okay, so I had forgotten to add something to the palm file. So make sure that, um, again, I'm going to have the working palm in the description, but I um, pretty much just updated this and added the missing stuff. So now it has a working manifest. So once you get over here, what you're going to want to do is this is going to be a, uh, slightly different than, say, building a plugin or whatever. You're going to want to name your uh, repository name like net.minecraft.server or something. Um, and pretty much what you want to do is whenever we, how I'm doing this is I'm essentially copying the directories of source code into my own file and modifying it as I want. And then I, what I would pretty much do from there, what you could do is make a, um, a wrapper around that and then just slightly modify the classes to handle your wrapper. Um, you could just keep, you could just expand this as time goes on. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to do one for the main class. So what we can pretty much do is, I just have this memorized, but you can actually find this, the path with IntelliJ. I'll show you in a moment. So I'll, I'll call it main, to, it'll pretty much just be Minecraft's main class. So we know it's the package, and if we do, um, in, if we just say net.minecraft.server.main, you'll actually see that we, we are going to have the, an identical path to it and an identical file name to it. So then what we could do is simply go to do click it, control click it. Um, it's going to think it's my own import. All right, so pretty much once you um, set up this little directory path, it'll allow you to um, do pretty much you can modify any class file inside the game source code without it, without having to worry about decompilation issues. Well, for the most part. So what you can do is you can find Minecraft's native main class and do something as like control A, control C, uh, control A, control V, and you have everything. Now, there's usually a few errors in here because of, um, you know, f fails. So you can like fix them um, with just by doing stuff like that and um, just control pretty much Alt, alt Enter until. And it'll fix a lot of the basic bugs. There's going to be some that are a little bit more complicated that won't fix right away. Um, 
you just can you just need to fix those are just decom the decompilers not perfect that's why we've got billions of these and the mapper doesn't include all those so you can actually rename these as you feel necessary um, it'll make it might make your life a little bit easier um, anyways uh, enough about that what we can do is um, this is going to be the pretty much like the first thing that gets called when Minecraft's main class gets called. We're pretty much overriding Minecraft's main class. So now we have full control. We can do whatever we want. So something that we could do um, is a simple system dot out dot print line um, hello from um, modified server dot jar. Alright, so something like that. So now that that's done, we can pretty much... Let's just stop here and we can compile it to see the changes. So what you're going to want to do to compile this is um, pretty much... And Maven's, Maven is taking care of all the hard stuff. So all we need to do is go over here and go into um, all this stuff. And we're going to want to just click package. Um, and let's... It's gonna do some fun stuff. It's gonna build it. Okay, so once your um, your your script is finished build, once you're finished building the jar file, what you're gonna want to do is find your project's file location. There's a few ways to do it. You can just right-click this and open file location. But um, once you get there, just go down to target. You're gonna want to go to um, uh, actually it's right here. Um, so all you're gonna want to do is you should have this and we can actually look inside of it if we want purely optional I sometimes it's cool to look at though so um, I'm gonna open it with WinRAR because I'm lazy um, you can just go to net minecraft server and this is another way you can find all the package paths and then you can go to main.class and you gotta open this in a um, you have to open this in IntelliJ you can't just it's binary stuff you know um, so inside of here, we should we sh what we should see is this, and so this pretty much just tells you that we just modified the game source code. Now, since we did this the way we did, we don't actually have to worry about um, we don't have to worry about the server. We don't have to worry about it being deobfuscated or anything. So we can just do a server, throw this in here, and then make a bat script or something to um, run the jar file. So I'll, I'll provide one in just a moment here. So if we go into here and do something like this, and start it with the script right here, which again just looks just like this, um, it's just a standard one, and you start the server, you'll see, look at that, it says hello for modified server jar. Now obviously that's pretty mediocre, we could do more with it, but um, we set this to true, and open up the server and then in the meantime I guess I could even launch a client localhost you'll notice we're on the server I we just built 1.16 say you want to do, do something a little bit cooler um, because let's be real here this isn't that interesting um, I will show that in another video and um, yeah it's pretty standard you can change variable names you can really do whatever you want but uh, there's a couple things that I can always go over in the future that will prevent the that will crash the client, so you got to be careful. All right, um, just let me know if there's anything I didn't go over that well, and thanks for watching. Bye.